is to consider that this is this is now our last television lecture in the series. I, I, I really have to express my profound gratitude to ACCA, you know, for making this available. And hopefully you guys have learned quite a lot. That's my sincere hope that you have learned quite a lot and you shall apply whatever you have, we have learned, especially the tools on how to answer the exams and you apply those uh, to the fullest extent possible. The main downloads or take homes, the main downloads uh, are that, you know, it's an application exam it's an may just let your heart tell you in the course of your answering exams that when you're writing a point, whether you're doing SBL or you're doing APM, when you're writing a point which is not relating to an identified fact in the scenario, you are merely speculating about it. You are not, you are not, you are not like applying what you know to the scenario. So that that is the the key point. A very, very key point. So today is our five, our last television lecture. And as you say, I can't say something is last when it's not last. As you say, I know that after take after practicing and getting this far, clearly um, we have covered a lot. And what I have penciled and skimmed as what I wanted to sincerely equip you with, we have done that. Uh, so it is important to, for, 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 for me to let you know that you don't necessarily pass per se because you were taught by Mr. Pat always know these things. You don't also pass because you know the syllabus too much, you've covered and practiced extensively. You pass because you acknowledge that it is the will of God for you to pass. You know that? It is the will. You know, we, we always teach you, we do quite a lot of things, we do quite a lot of things, but in final analysis, we are not a key determinant to you passing. We are merely instrumentals. We are servants being used by your creator, you know, it is your God who wants you to pass. It is your God always, who is the ultimate, who is the essential, where you need to focus your attention on. And everything that we have been doing, we are called the instruments. And it is, it is not good if you focus on the instruments when the essential exists, you know that. It amounts to giving praise to a branch or to leaves of a tree whilst you are paying total disregard to roots, total disregard to the roots, total disregard to the seed which gave birth to the roots and the tree we are talking about. Everything was covered in the roots, in the, in the, in the seed. So the seed was the essential. All that we are barely seeing are the results. So we should always celebrate if we have knowledge that there is a seed which gives birth to everything that we desire. So I, I, it's my prayer as I am saying these things that I, 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 I take no honor in this. I always give back the honor to where it is true. It's God is doing and it has been marvelous in our eyes. May the good Lord in his infinite mercies as he is granting understanding, you know, his goodness is always, take for example, take for example, we have faith that COVID is all over, right? We, we have faith that whenever you are breathing, there's a danger that you may breathe in COVID. I just want you to, to use that faith of COVID, which is something invisible, you know? We always have faith that an invisible COVID can be, you can come across it elsewhere. I want you to have that faith going forward that the favor of the Lord, which is invisible, the goodness of the Lord, which is invisible, the Lord himself, who is invisible, is everywhere. 
in as much as you were busy putting on masks and doing quite a lot of stuff because you are you have faith that something invisible which we are being told by doctors who are ever changing their positions and we are being told that it exists and we have faith and we are busy putting on masks to accommodate that clearly what more about jesus who is the same yesterday today and forever who say them always with you let us let us acknowledge that his goodness let it go before us his favor let it let it equally go before us so that he, 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 let him locate us in his mercies as we write the exam let him show us the mercy or the power of his salvation as we write advanced performance management as we write advanced performance management may his favor locate you and show to you the power of his salvation where it's not about your might neither about who taught you never never about you know your power but it's by his spirit so in jesus christ mighty name we pray amen okay that was the first part of it um you know you know it's a way may the good lord always he grant you success grant you success you i can't be you know and i can't be in a situation where i have faith that covid exists but i have never seen it yet we have got jesus who we know is there but we don't trust in his favor and in his power no be it far from us and that's part of it okay mm. <laughs> Oh, you know, guess what? As part of my prayer, are you noticing I was also applying my prayer to the case at the end? You know, that's what a, a tutor who teaches APM does. Always apply. Always apply. Are you noticing that after applying, it makes sense to you, isn't it? Uh, I'm joking on it, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to demystify this concept of applying to the scenario, you know? We have applied it, and you are actually saying, ah, but what say is saying makes sense, quite a lot of sense. How can I have faith in COVID, believing that it is everywhere? But I've never heard it talking, I'm hearing it. What more about my God who said it himself, that I'm always with you and I'm everywhere, and my favor and my goodness and everything is before me? Why can't I also in that area have masks, masks of praise, you know, not masks of of, of of closing my entire face no masks of praise masks of acknowledgement masks of focusing on that essential you have faith also in that we can't have faith in covid and put on a mask on something you've never seen but fail to put on a mask of praise and mask of faith and mask of acknowledgement to what god himself jesus himself has said okay so um okay so today, as I said last week, I'm, I'm not going to overdo it. You know, in as much as I want to do it, I'm not going to overdo it. So I'll, 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 I'll put the floor be open for all of us. Allow me to share my screen. Uh, it will be open for all of us. So that will be participating. You know, I, I'm sure I've sent the, 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 the today's discussion item. Uh, if you haven't received it. Allow me also to send it in, perhaps. Let me send it again. Hmm. This this Skype, wow, I have it. It opens two windows at once. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Um, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> it would it would it would equally make sense it would equally make sense if I also sent you some additional I I did send you mocks we did first mock and I said the second mock do it yourself as part of your practice I'm sure I have done that and you do notice the second mock. Uh, I'm sure you also wrote exams which were administered by BPP 
uh, e-learning and premier business school. I'm sure some of you, uh, you ensure that you, so, okay. So what I, what I, what I would do is I have some additional, oh no, no, the mocks, I gave you the mock, but perhaps I, I, I will send additional APM type B questions and additional APM type A questions these two additional type A questions, additional type B questions, after I've sent them, together with replaying of videos, I'm sure you'll be equipped for the exam. I will send additional, I will, I will download them. They are in a zipped format, so I have to unzip them and, and send them to you as separate PDF documents. After I've done that with the videos, I'm sure, Mm, you'll be to a large extent ripe for the exam. So expect immediately after the lecture for me to send this in our in our in our um, WhatsApp group. In our WhatsApp group, yes. All right. So let me open the paper. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so today I'm expecting participation, guys. I'm expecting quite serious participation. Not, 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 not to let you say do much of the talking because I want, I want you to give me that feedback, which I, I, I crave for, I'm craving for it, craving for it. So it's a selection of questions. These are just selection of questions on the on the some of the topics that I feel like we need to touch on. Uh, this is the document that I've just sent to you. This is the document. Can we all open the document? Uh, in the interest of time, allow me to read it. Allow me to read it. And I'm sure some of you have read it already, but some of you are just seeing it now. So let me read it. Lop 10 Industries is one of the largest listed consumer grables manufacturers in the world, making washing machines, tumble dryers, and dishwashers. It has recently expanded into B-Land, which is a developing country where incomes have... You know what? When you have these words, always know that this, this, these are part of your answers. All right. Which is a developing country um right so here you go let me highlight it mm -hmm. yeah, so which is a developing country where incomes have risen to the point where demand for is increasing for locked goods amongst the middle class population locked believes in the economies of scale of large manufacturing sites which with dispersed the selling branches in markets in which it operates. Therefore, it has entered the bill and market by setting up local sales force and supporting set it has entered the bill and market by setting up a local sales force and supporting them with national marketing campaign. So in other words, in the bill and it's not manufacturing. Bill and it's merely for selling. The company is currently selling two products in bill and both are types of washing machines. The basic washing machine, the Chiefu, with, with functions which are comparable with existing local competitors' output, and the premium product, which is called Porsche, um, which has functions and features similar to Lopten's products in other developed countries. Both products are manufactured and imported from its regional manufacturing hub. Uh, which is in the neighboring country of Kayland. So manufacturing is done in Kayland, but sales and marketing is being done in Beeland. So there you, they, 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 yeah, you go. And then the competitive environment in Beeland is changing rapidly. The washing machine market used to be dominated by two large local manufacturers who make simple, cheap, and reliable machines. There are two other international manufacturers, apart from Lepton, 
One of these has already opened a factory in Billand. Remember, Lopten is not manufacturing. It is simply using Billand as a sales hub. But there's a competitor which has opened manufacture a factory in Billand and is producing machines similar to Chiefu to compete directly with existing local producers. The government of Billand has supported this new entrant. So that's a political environment here. The government, okay, let me highlight it. The government of Billand has supported this new entrant with grants and is keen to encourage inward investment by foreign companies and the resulting expertise and employment which they provide. The other international competitor is now considering entering Billand market. Remember, there are two international competitors. So one of them has opened a factory and the government is giving grants to such. And the other international competitor is now considering entering Billand market with more highly specified machines similar to Porsche. So already one is, is producing a product similar to Chiefu. The other one is considering entering, producing a product which is similar to Porsche. Lopten's stated mission is to be, so this is the stated mission. Lopten's stated mission is to be the most successful manufacturer of, the, of its type of products in the world. The board has set the following critical success factors for Lopten's bill and operations. Uh, so these are the critical success factors. Number one, to obtain a dominant market presence. Number two, to maximize profits with unacceptable risk. Number three, to maintain a brand image of Lopten's for above average quality products. The board is considering using the following key performance indicators for each product. So this, this is a host of key performance indicators up to here. So they are considering using total profit, average sales price per unit, contribution per unit, market share, margin of safety, return on capital employed, total quality costs, and consumer awards one. And margin of safety simply means actual sales minus break-even sales over actual sales. You know, that's, that's the margin of safety there. Now, the board has asked you as a consultant to assess, so these are now the questions. The board has asked you as a consultant to assess its current performance measurement systems. Meaning, when you are writing a report and you need a heading, most students, they say, what will be the subject of the report? This is the subject of the report. What is, what is this all about? So the board has asked you to assess its current performance measurement systems. So this is the report, subject of the report. They want a report which calculates the various indicators suggested above and then assess how the key performance indicators address issues in the external environment. The report should assess the balance between planning and controlling represented by the KPIs as they want to ensure that these match what they should be, what they should be doing at a strategic level at strategic level in lock 10 so this one is a very is a very good question this match match what they should be doing at strategic level at lock 10 okay so let me again highlight it and strike through it okay and then also it should evaluate how kpi is fit with critical success factors, meaning, meaning does the KPI link with the critical success factor which have been selected? In other words, it's, it's like taking, it, taking each critical success factor in 10, the, the three critical success factors. You are telling us, do we have KPIs which link to the critical success factors? Like, Dominant market presence. Do we have KPIs which are linking to that? That's that's the question. The data is given in Appendix One. Has been collated for your use. Now, finally, the board is, is considering new marketing strategies going forward. When they say finally, it means this should be the final part of your report. 
Plan A is to continue operations at as at present, allowing for 4% growth per annum in volumes of both Chefu and Porsche. Plan B is to dramatically reduce marketing spent for on Chefu and reallocate resources to focus on marketing on Porsche. This is expected to lead to an anticipated growth in volume of 15% per annum for Porsche and flat sales for Chefu. When they say flat sales, they are saying it will be maintained at current levels. The target operating profit for bill and operation in two years' time is 135. And the board wants an evaluation of these strategies meeting that target. So the, the board wants to, to, to see which of the two marketing plans, plan A or plan B, will result in a profit of 135 million in two years' time. Okay, so these are the requirements in the case. So here you have got case here, appendices. So when you are calculating, when you are calculating these, uh, when you are calculating these KPIs, you have to calculate for both cheerful. They have got, they are saying for each product, the KPIs are for each product. Now. This should be in the report. This should be in the report. So, so because they are saying they want a report which calculates various, the first part is they want a report which calculates various indicators suggested above and how they address issues in the external environment. So this is the first part. So all you have to do then is you have to, to, to prepare a report nicely and make sure you have these in a tabular fashion. So these are the revenue and cost data for, for, so this is per unit up to year. So if they say per unit variable costs up to year, you can use this to calculate contribution. You know that it's possible. You can use this now to calculate contribution. So. Okay, so you can you can you can put total variable cost for cheerful because I want you to work it out for yourself. What would be the total variable cost for cheerful? I don't have calculator with me. Oh, I don't have my calculator. Don't know when when my my children have put the calculator for me, but I can make use of what I have. Nine, 150 plus 40, 190 plus 60, 190 plus 20, you get uh, one, you get 210 plus 45, 255. So total variable cost is 255 here. And then you come here, what would be the total variable cost for, what would be the total variable cost for this? Total variable costs. Um, for for Porsche, it would be 120 plus 80, that's 200, plus 50, 250, 250 plus 30, 280, 280 plus 45, that's 325, equals 325. So 325 is the variable cost for, for, is the, is the variable cost for, for, for Porsche, 325 is the variable cost, all right? Okay, let me re reorder them ni nicely like what they were so that you can see them. So it's 325 and then fixed the cost. Notice fixed the costs are not given per unit. So fixed the costs are given in total. Revenue data, so revenue is this revenue is total. Now, if you want to find the selling price, it will be a matter of saying total revenue here divided by units, by units. Now, if you want to find, uh, concerning units, notice we are given B lens total market size there. We are given that. We are also given B lens sales. In other words, this information here helps us to calculate market share. If you want to calculate market share for cheerful and market share for Porsche, 
you can calculate that. And the another KPI, they are saying consumer awards one. So Porsche is one four, and Chiefu is one one. So Porsche is one four consumer awards, and Chiefu is one one consumer awards. So this is other piece of information there which the examiner wants. Okay, so required. I write a report to the board of Lopten, which, so all these are the requirements of the report. All these are the requirements of the report. Calculate key performance indicators suggested by the board for assessment of performance of the bill and operations. Uses paste analysis to identify issues in the operating, in the company's external environment, and then evaluates uh, the effectiveness. Now, the, these are two questions. You are using paste analysis to identify issues in the company's operating environment. Not in any in environment, in these companies. So this requires application. When they say in the companies, meaning they know you can use paste analysis wherever. But we don't want it wherever. We need in these companies. So you have to identify. If you say political, pick political factor in that in these companies and evaluate the effectiveness of the suggested KPIs in addressing these issues. So are you not seeing here there are 11 marks? So this is a two-part question. If you say political, you must in the company. Whilst you are still on political, you then have to tell us, do we have a KPI which is addressing this issue? If we don't, you just say we don't. You, you are allowed to say currently there is no KPI which is addressing these political issues. Then, taking each critical success factor in 10, evaluate how the suggested KPIs fit into the critical success factor. So this one is in... This one is, is, is an evaluation of the choice of the K, of the critical success or of the KPI. To say, is this KPI really addressing uh, the critical success factors? To say, if the board is using this, can they really drive the Kanban forward? Assess the extent to which the suggested KPIs are suitable for planning rather than controlling. So you're looking at assessment. Assessment is like, what planning KPIs are, what controlling KPIs are, and the suggested KPIs are pivoting in which direction. Are they pivoting more towards planning? Are they pivoting more towards controlling? And then evaluate whether the marketing strategies will reduce uh, the cost gap. Evaluate whether the suggested marketing strategy, which suggested marketing strategy will reduce the cost gap. Now, Allow me to open my, my, my Excel there. Uh, let me open my Excel. It may, it may take just, just a sec to open. Right. Okay, so here is my Excel. So now you under you now understand how you introduce your report. The introduction of a report, I told you where you get the subject. I'm sure that now you know, because they are saying the body has asked you as a consultant to assess the current performance measurement systems. So this is your report. You're the subject of your report. Performance measurement systems it locked in. Now the the introduction to your report, there are various ways. Because the, they say they want a report which calculates various indicators suggested. But you can actually have this as a report. To say this report calculates various indicators suggested by the board. You don't say above now. You say suggested by the board. And then assesses how the key performance indicators address issues in the external environment. Secondly, the report assesses the balance between planning and controlling represented by the KPIs as, as the board wants to ensure that they match what they should be doing at a strategic level. Uh, also, 
the, the report provides an evaluation of how the KPIs fit with the existing critical success factors for the company. Lastly, the report concludes uh, with an evaluation of, they are saying, the board wants an evaluation of these strategies. So the, the, the report concludes with an evaluation or, or the report makes a recommendation on which marketing strategy the board should pursue in order to achieve its desired profit target. And then you put a conclusion. A conclusion now, it's a, it's a sentence or so on everything that you have written to say if, if the KPIs need adjustment, they are not fitting critical success factors, you conclude like that. Which marketing strategy may, makes, makes sense, you conclude like that. So because of, because I, I would rather start with, you know, you would go for easy marks. There are various ways you need to go for easy marks. In an exam like this, clearly the, the last nine marks are not anything that you would think of. These nine marks, which are saying, assess whether the proposed marketing strategies result in performance gap. So what they are saying, now there are two sets of easy marks. Number one is easy, now the last one is easy. So I want to start with the last one. Then I'll give you the floor to, 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 to work on question one. They are saying which of the two marketing strategies results in performance gap. So performance gap is like this. So there is a gap if in year two, we don't have a profit of 135. They want to have a profit of 135 in year two, total profit for the bill and operation. Now they want to achieve it with these two marketing plans. So if any of these plans falls, there is a performance gap but if if the profit are on on either of these beats the 135 we say there is no performance gap so these are some of the questions you can easily harvest max now plan a it's saying they 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 want both volumes to grow by four percent so four percent for each per annum so so you simply say this will this will be your word process and, and you say appendix one appendix this this will be your spreadsheet so appendix one uh, evaluation of uh, if uh, so you say target target profit target profit in year two in year two it's 135 million, so you put 135 million, and then you say uh, evaluation uh, of plan A, evaluation of plan A, of, of plan A, this is marketing plan A. So you say, when you're evaluating marketing plan A, it is customary that we can, we can, we can modify this data for now to calculate market price to calculate the selling prices. Allow me to, 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 to just shout for someone to bring my calculator here. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm just waiting for someone to bring my calculator. Uh, come in. Thanks. Okay, so I, why why calculator? Because I need selling prices. Now, selling price, you simply say sales of a billion operations. So it's like 448, 448 divided by up divided by 1,12. That's your selling price. It's 400 for cheerful. For Porsche, it's 308 divided by 0.44, 700 for Porsche. So I can now say evaluate uh, plan A in year two. I say contribution, contribution. I just want to see if in year two we would have achieved 
uh, that profit target. So contribution, I have cheerful, cheerful notice. The current cheerful, cheerful results are you, uh, volume is 1,12. So I just say 1,12. But remember, it is going to grow by 4% per year. So I say multiply by 1,04 to the power 2. Remember, it's 4% per year. We are now in year 2. Multiply by contribution. What is going to, what was going to grow is just the volume. But price will remain the same. We are told here that it is only volume which is which will grow. So the price, the contribution will be 400 minus 225. That will be contribution. 400 minus 225. So the contribution that I will get is, I just say equals 400 minus 225, close bracket, times uh, 1, 1,12 times 1, 0,4 to the power 2. Enter. Okay. Where have I gotten it wrong? Okay, I have not put a bracket at the first initial here. So, yeah, there you go. That would be contribution for cheerful. And then you say Porsche. Porsche. Current sales levels for Porsche, it's 0 0.44. And we are going to grow it by 4% because they say it both. So it will be like 0 0.44, that's quantity, times inflation, meaning we are, we are to grow it by 0 0.04 to the power 2, because we need year 2, times uh, contribution 700 minus, selling price is 700 minus 325. 700 minus 3, 325. Then you say, notice how easily I'm scoring max. No wonder why I said this one I can any max easily. Uh, 700 minus 325, close bracket, times uh, 0, 0,44 times 1,04 to the power 2. To the power, it's shift 6, remember? So there, there I go, and I say, uh, let's fix the costs. Let's, uh, let's fix the cost. Fix the costs. I, I just need to fix the costs in year two. What are they? Is they uh, you just add the total column here. To just, to just add the total column to say 36 plus 32 plus 12 plus 160, 240. So total fixed cost, what I'm getting here is 240 minus 240. And then I have my year two profit because they need to assess how my year two profit will look like. So I, I just do it like this. So my year two profit is coming out to be, my year two profit is coming out as, S150. Verify my calculations here. Let me verify my calculations. Uh, 400 my, uh, times 1,12 times 1,04 squared. Right? Contribution times volume. So there you go. Right? I, I, it's a matter of just trying to, oh, two, two, it's what? It's 255, not 225. I put 255 here. Yeah. Actually, it's 255, like this. So notice, under, under plan A. Oh, sorry, guys, please mute. Under plan A, are you not seeing? I'm not leaving, I'm not getting the target. So I I just say plan A results in performance gap. Plan A results in performance gap. Plan results in performance gap of 24 million. 
because I wanted to get 135, but I got 114. So there is, is it 24 of, yes, if I add this, uh, is it 20, 21 million? 14 plus 21, yes. It results in performance gap of 21 million. Then I go to plan B. Examine, I wanted to know, will, will I achieve my, 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 my results with this? So what I simply do is I copy, remember my exam is computer-based. I paste it here. But with plan B, there are some changes now. What are the changes? Um, the changes for plan B are, I'm told here yeah, that for plan B, I will dramatically reduce marketing spend on cheerful and to reallocate resources to focus on the marketing for Porsche. This is expected to lead to anticipated growth of 15% per annum for Porsche and flat sales for cheerful. So Porsche is going to grow by 15%. So all I'm doing is for cheerful, there's no more growth because cheerful will be flat sales, so I make it flat. But for Porsche, there is growth of 15%. So instead of saying 1,04, I'm now saying 1,15. So I come here and make, make those changes here. There is flat for cheerful. Here, there is 15% growth for Porsche. I just say 1,5. And so are you not seeing, if I follow plan B, I have beat the profit target of 135 in year two. I have beaten the profit target of 135 in year two. Or, or you know, the reason, so, so plan one results in performance gap and plan two, plan B does, achieves the target. So plan, if plan B achieves the target, we say there is no performance gap. I, imagine, these nine marks, I have scored them in just less than five minutes. No wonder why I said you can, you need to go for easy marks. These nine marks in less than five minutes because it was about just inflating. Now, these other sorts, sets of easy marks, it's on part A because part A says the board wants a report which calculates the key performance indicators suggested by the board for the assessment of performance of bill and operations. So this is another part. This is another part. So if, if the board wants a report on this one, what then do we have to do? Which calculates, as a general rule, put, put all your computations in the appendices. Don't, don't actually bring in your computations in the report. You have annexures or appendices. You can say it's an appendices one or annexure one, whichever way you want. So this is basically appendix two. If I if if I if I if I had gone for easy marks, I would say appendix two. I'm still in my I'm still in my spreadsheet. Yeah. Then I just say I just say uh, KPIs. KP, if, uh, current KPIs, current year KPIs, current year KPIs. So the board wants for each product. So what you then have to do is, you say um, uh, product, product. So you have two products. You have got cheerful. And then you have got Porsche. It, 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 it's important to present it like this. Then you go KPI by KPI. Now, here are the KPIs. The KPIs are, there is, so the body has chosen the following KPIs for each product. Total profit, average profit, sales price per unit, contribution per unit, market share, marginal surface, return on capital employed, and total quality costs. Can you calculate this, guys? Can you calculate this? If you don't have the question paper, I have sent it in the... The question paper is, is, is in the chat. Yeah. Unless you are using the phone, perhaps. Well, would say, oh, say, I'm using the phone, and I don't have, I don't have the paper with me. But I have sent the question paper here. <clears throat> okay, so there you go. 
um, or let us or in the or, or we can or we can calculate together anyway. You know, as you say, I I I I I always get compelled when it comes to assistance. I have this overwhelming push to assist the students, even though I say calculate. So let us calculate everything there. The first, if we can, if we can, if we can list the KPIs. Let me list the KPIs there. Total profit, average selling price, contribution per unit. So there is total profit. Total profit. Average selling price. Average selling price. And contribution per unit. Contribution per unit. Other KPIs that I have is market share, margin of surface and loss. So there's market share, there's margin of surface, margin of surface, there's loss, return on capital employed. And then the last KPI is total quality costs and consumer awards one. Total quality costs, total quality costs, awards one, awards one. So the board, the, the board wants you to put this in a report. So this is how you would work it. You may come here and just work, perform some workings. You know, profit we know. Profit is, the, is, the, is, is simply a matter of saying sales units minus contribution minus fixed costs that's your profit so it's like i mean it's like equals sales units one comma one two that's for that's for for cheerful times contribution is 400 minus 255 close bracket minus fixed costs 120 because they are they are they are fixed costs are like 240, which is 120, 120 each. Fixed costs here are, you know, they are the same. They are, they are, they are, they are allocated evenly, so you do notice it's 120 each because they are totaling to 240 in total. Are you noticing how easy it was, it was for me to calculate profit? I just copy the same here and change the relevant figures for, for cheerful, Selling price is 700. Fixed costs, variable costs are 325. And then uh, for units are 0, 0,44. That's 75,8. That's total profit. Average selling price, that's what I have calculated earlier. 400 there, 700 there. Easy max. Go for easy max in a question. Contribution per unit equals 400 minus 255 for this, 145. For Porsche equals 700 minus variable costs, 325. For Porsche is 375. Then you need market share. Market share, it's a matter of saying total market size over B land is operations in units. If I'm given total market size there and I'm given B land operations in units, I can come up with markets, total market share. It will be 1,2 over 9,33. 1,2 over 9,33 equals 1,12 over 9,33. This this answer normally is it's, you put it as a percentage, 12%. For Porsche, 0, 0,44 over 1,33 because 0, 0,44 over 1,33. So market share for Porsche is 33%. Are you not seeing? If you are working, if you are working on Excel, don't waste the time putting like formula like formula here and stuff because the examiner will put the case here if the examiner wants to know how you have calculated profit 
The examiner simply puts the case here, and everything is presented to view on the formula bar. Don't waste time copying the figures here and then punching them here, because you are duplicating, and you, there's no marks that you'll be getting for duplication. Now, margin of surface, they are saying, you know, margin of surface means total output minus break even output. And then you divide that by total output. So it will be like, how do we calculate break even output? Total output for Porsche is, it's total output for Porsche is 1,12 minus break even output for Porsche. What is the break even output? Break even output is, Total fixed cost, which is 120, divided by contribution per unit, divided by contribution per unit like this. You close the bracket and then you divide by the total output, 1, 1, 2. So here it's 26%. Let me do it here so that you can see. Margin of surface is simply total output minus break even output over total output so it's for for Porsche my output is 0 0.44 I, I open bracket first I say 0, 0 0.44 minus what is my break even output break even is total fixed cost which is 120 over contribution per unit which is 375 I have it already then I close bracket and divide by total output 0.44 so the 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 there go i can you can verify with a calc, with a calculator just in case the figures are not coming out right let us calculate break even for Porsche for example so 120 divided by 375 so the break even for Porsche is 0, 0.32 but we manufactured 0, 0.44 meaning margin of surface is uh, 0, 0.44 minus 0, 0.32 equals divided by 0, 0.44, you still get 27%. So these are the answers. And then Ross, Ross, no wonder why you are given cap to employed. Cap to employed is 326 and 250. So Ross, it's profit over cap to employed. So it's like profit we calculated divided by 326, which is this profit over 326. You get that? And, and here it equals this profit over 250. Right, so these are your loss figures. And then what else? Um, the other KPI is Total quality costs, total quality costs, it's like this. Uh, you know, quality costs from this are into two. There is quality costs which are fixed. Yeah, 86, 86, 86, 86, these are fixed. And then there is quality costs which is variable, which is per unit, 20 and 30. So total quality costs 20 and 30 are variable. Fixed it's 86, 86. So if the KPI is total quality costs, we need to, con to, to, to multiply variable by number of units to get total variable quality costs. And then we add to 86 to get total quality costs. So it will be like equals 1,12 multiplied by 20 plus 86. So that's 108,4. And then here, 0, 0,44 equals, uh, equals 0, 0,44 multiplied by variable quality costs plus 86, get 99,2. So these are the total quality costs. So there you go. And then another KPI there is consumer awards one. So consumer awards one, you read underneath the appendix, we are told that Chief has won one best buy award from Bill and Consumer Association and Porsche has won four. 
So consumer awards one, here you put one, there you put four. Sir, why did you put marketing costs in, as, as part of total quality, total quality costs? I added marketing costs. Oh, sorry, sorry, you are right. Actually, I had added eight to be quality to be quality costs. It's marketing costs. Thanks for correction. So it should be plus six, not plus eight to six. You are right. I had I had overlooked there. Right. You know that's what I want. It shows that we are together. Okay. So so there you go. So 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 you have that. Notice. This is how you present stuff to the board. So you then just copy. Remember, you are writing a report to the board. So what we want in the report is just you copy this as it is from your Excel and paste it in the board of the report. Can you imagine a situation where, as a student, you were putting brackets and you were busy calculating? There's no need if it's in Excel because everything you put in brackets is shown on the spreadsheet under the, uh, on the in this in this. Because you may say, where will the examiner actually figure it out? The way I worked this, it's there in the formula bar. Everything you have here, it's the examiner will just put a case at the it, 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 it populates in the formula bar, so it's easy. Okay, imagine how you score is, please, please, what we are doing with your say here is called exam final touches. This question is 50 marks, but already you now have 20. Why 20? Because part one and part two of the, and part and last part of the report, they, they are scientific, they are easy marks. Like calculate KPIs, clearly you can calculate and get 11. And lastly, evaluate which of the two we have performance gap. So already you've got 20. Because the goal is you need to get your marks. Take no chances. So if I was in this exam already, I know. Uh, what I was going to know is part two, part three, and part four, this is now where my say always talk to me about application. So I then need to be careful, but already I know I'm in the 20 mark category. So out of 50, I am now in control of the question. You can tell, you are no longer being controlled. You can now control this exam now. Use paste analysis to identify issues in the FEMS external environment, and then evaluate the effectiveness of the chosen KPIs in addressing these issues. So what I want, what I want is to go back to the case. Remember, there is this word end. End. Uh, you know, this this is is telling us something. It's telling us that there are two points sides of the argument. So paste analysis has got four variables: political, economic, social, and social, cultural, and technological. And there are eleven marks allocated. So it means there is roughly one and a half mark. For identifying a political variable, there is another uh, one and a half mark for telling us whether the suggested KPIs are addressing that variable or it, it's not addressing that variable. So you know that there is roughly three marks on everything. Because 11 is equal to kind of 12. So there's roughly three marks on everything there. On Pesteo has got four, so it's like three marks on it. A uh, one and a half marks for identifying a political variable and one and a half marks for telling us whether the current set of KPIs are addressing that issue we have identified. So let me go back paraphrasing the question for you because I want you to identify, I just want you to go through identification. Remember, uh, log 10 is operating, is, ex is expanded into B land, and B land we are told that it's a developing country where incomes have risen to the point where demand is increasing for Lopten's goods amongst the growing middle class population. All this information you need it. Now, what is it that Billend is doing, uh, Lopten is doing in Billend? It merely sets up its local sales force and 
and national marketing campaign. But when it comes to manufacturing, the washing machines are being manufactured in a neighboring country of Thailand. So what it means is washing machines are being imported into Thailand. Washing machines are being imported into Thailand. So that's that's you 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 we need to know that's what we need to know there. They are being imported into Thailand. And then what else? What else do we have to know here? Uh, this bill and competitive environment is changing rapidly because washing machines, they are, they are companies also in bill and two large local manufacturers who are also supplying the reliable and cheap machines. Also, there are other two major international suppliers, meaning other apart from Lockton, who are also selling into bill and one of these two major is already has already opened a factory and is producing washing machines which are similar to cheerful and the government of billand has already uh, given grants to this company because it's, it's promoting foreign direct investment and also employment creation so in other words this was given to that large major international not to lock them and also the other because there are two major the other is even considering producing, it's not, it's not yet producing, but it's even considering entering bill and market and produce a product which is similar to Porsche. And then, uh, so you are given all this, all this information. Uh, and then these are the KPIs and stuff. I'm sure for, for past analysis, these are the major ones. Now, talk to me. Let us use the chat feature for now. I want you to identify issues in the external environment which are facing you. And then I shall ask a question as to which of the KPIs do you think is addressing the issue? If there is none, you say none. If, they, if you figure out one, you figure, you say, you figure it out. I shall then be asking why do you say so? So my questions are in stages. The first stage of the question is, can you use past analysis to identify issues in the external environment? So if you say political, identify a political issue. If you say economic, identify an economic issue, which is facing this company, not any other economic, not, a, not, a, not an issue which is not facing this company. Can we do that, guys? Let us make use of the chat feature. Let, may we type that? Let us type that, guys. All right. I'm waiting for you guys to begin typing. Right. I'm waiting for you guys to type. Nobody's typing there. Do the typing, guys. I'm waiting.
right? I'm happy that you guys are typing, which is cool. Continue typing. All right, Angie, I'm not seeing you typing. Alright. I'm expecting to see everyone typing the issues in the uh, in this in Lopten's external environment. That's what I'm well, that's what I'm 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 asking you guys to type. And I'm waiting. All right. Perfect, guys. Continue typing. Right, your those who have joined, your colleagues are typing a question that I have just asked them on the chat there. You can see your colleagues are answering that question. Going to refer shortly. All right. All right. I'm, I'm sure I am now ripping it up. Try ripping it up. It appears everyone, most of you guys are writing political. Remember, PEST has got three, has got four, three other variables missing there. Uh, there is economic, there is technological. All right. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, I'm giving you additional two minutes because I want you to type it yourself. At least it, it comforts me if you can point out these things. All right, but Timmy, once you are done, uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'm I'm kind of answered for now. All right. So what was the question saying? Here you are. The question is saying, use paste analysis. Uh, the question is saying, use paste analysis to identify issues in the company's external, use paste analysis to identify issues in the company's external environment, and then evaluate the effectiveness of the suggested KPIs in addressing these issues. So there are two things. What this question has got 11 marks. We can we can say five five four comma five marks five and a half marks are allocated to identifying issues in the external environment, and the other five and a half marks are allocated to telling the examiner whether the current set of KPIs is really addressing these issues. 
So clearly you have taking your points in turn, make, make sure you, 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 you remember our KPIs. These are our KPIs, which are shaded in yellow here. So we have calculated the KPIs and we now have them. So these are our KPIs. So we want to identify a factor there and try to figure out if the current set of KPIs are addressing that particular, that particular variable. Okay, so you have all mentioned that political environment, yes. Political environment, it is mentioned, so what you simply do is you say, you say, they are saying use paste analysis. So examine expects that by now you already know what paste analysis is. So ordinarily for you to begin to tell the examiner that paste analysis stands for political or economic, that one is not even giving you much because from the question itself, the examiner already expects you to know what paste analysis is. So all you have to do is to apply just to say, to just say, you just write a subheading to your report, you just say issues in the company's external environment and, if, and an evaluation of the effectiveness of the suggested KPIs in addressing these issues. I said these questions you don't type, otherwise you spend a lot of time. You just copy the question as it is and paste, then mod edit it, you just edit it. So if you want to do the question, you'd start by typing issues in the company's environment, in, in external environment, and then end an evaluation. So you copy first, paste it, and then just edit where they say, then evaluate, you say, and an evaluation of the effectiveness. Don't begin to, don't spend time copying questions. I mean, typing questions, just copy and paste, copy and paste and proceed. We know you are on right on track, but you make some, some editing because you are writing to the to the board. You can't say uses paste analysis. No, you would say issues, and then an evaluation. You don't say evaluates as if you want the board to evaluate. You are the one who is evaluating. So you say political, and right away don't don't even write a hypothetical statements after saying political. Get into the case, and say. Government of billions is is, uh, is 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 giving incentives like grants to attract in the foreign direct investment. You you get that. One major one major international supplier here has already relocated to billion, and billion government has already set up manufacturing facilities in billion, and billion government is given such. And if an investor grants, so you can see that this is against Lopten's business model, because Lopten's business model is to import manufactured uh, washing machines from Kland and sell them in Billand. So it means these grants are likely to make cost of production in Billand cheaper, and this 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 will affect what Lopten's sales and stuff in the competitive marketplace. Then you then say, currently, there is no KPI which is measuring that. And clearly, there is no KPI which is measuring this issue of government trying to attract foreign direct investment. So if, if, if you were asked to suggest KPIs, you may, because the grants, grants are being given if you are investing in bill and, and you are creating employment. So you, if, 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 if suppose the question is say, suggest KPIs. You may simply say those employed who are from Bill and over total labor force, over total workforce, they are locked in. In so doing, you can lobby the government and say, look, we are creating employment for you. Or even, even though you are setting up manufacturing hub, the amount that you are investing in Bill and, I mean, for setting up marketing hub, still it's still fine. Right, but you are not asked to suggest new. So you simply say currently there is no KPI which is uh, affecting this, which is addressing this. Another issue is, remember our business model is to import. So there is an economic issue there. There is clearly an economic issue. Our business model is to import 
And we are told that government is encouraging foreign direct investment here. And our business model is to import. So there are issues like government may actually come up with tariffs on imports because it's encouraging, we are, it's encouraging inward investment, not outward investment. So it's against our business model. We, can, we are all actually affected by exchange rates. Exchange rate movements may uh, will actually affect. Because this is not speculation. This is the reality. Don't say, say, where is it written about the exchange rate? What is it that you can extrapolate from the word import? From the word import, when you are importing something into bill and clearly you are affected by exchange rate. These are economic variables there. You'll be affected by exchange rates. And currently, there is no KPI which is addressing that because this is a serious part of our business model. We may actually require a KPI which is, which is saying exchange losses or exchange gains as a separate KPI there. It's not there. Another, another issue is bill and customers, you know, bill and is a developing country. The word developing has a lot of connotations on it, has a lot of economic connotations because it's developing and incomes are rising. This you can put it under social or you can still put it under economic, it's still fine. If it's a developing country, it means consumers, they will have disposable incomes and clearly they, they are rising, consistent with it being developing. So there will be, there will be need they, they might be there is increasing demand for washing machines amongst the middle class population. You know, middle class is the majority of people. Middle class is the working class, so to speak. So that's the majority of people in any country, the middle class. So if, if demand is increasing, so you would say, you would say, um, what what KPIs are addressing this? K, they, they, they might be a KPI which is addressing that, for example. Uh, market share, you know, because the market is, is even though demand is increasing, so market share tells us that as demand is increasing, what proportion of customers are increasing with our product? Issues like contribution, I mean, total profit, though these are absolute, fig absolute figures that they have a connotations of 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 social because it's a billion market that we are targeting so if my market share of total profit trends over time though one year figures are not enough but trends over time can give directors an indication of of of, of these economic variables so you can say a kpi is a remote a relationship you can't say it is perfect in addressing you may it may address in this area it may not address in this area you are required to say that then you have got social cultural social cultural again social cultural this issue of middle class and economy being developing it's a social cultural trend you know you know that it's a social cultural trend for people to accept washing machines do you know that for people to begin to use washing machines, it's a socio-cultural trend. If you want to, if you want to know that that is a serious issue, you can just imagine here in Zimbabwe. Suppose you are talking to your colleagues and say, "I have a problem nowadays. My washing machine has got a fault." You know, your colleagues may actually tell you that you are grandstanding. You are like. Yeah, pride or something because it's we are a society which we are yet to acknowledge that washing machine it's a basic commodity like a stove it's a basic commodity there's there's people who are still fighting about yeah you are not washing my clothes properly because they are still end washing the clothes but you know there are certain societies where washing machine it's a basic commodity. You know, in South Korea, in South Korea nowadays, they are even, you know, they, are, they, are, they now have cooking robots. 
India so you have a robot which cooks for you. So this issue of having a society which is still stereotyping like ladies to say they are into cooking, they are into washing, it's, it's, it's no longer, it's, it's, it's gradually phasing out. You know, someone will be cooking via a remote control whilst watching the television and the, and the robot will be doing the mess. They are now robots which are busy mowing the lawns and stuff. So if we have a if we have a society which is opening up to the use of washing machines, such a society actually, it's a social cultural shift. You know that you have to say that that way, that the fact that Bill and middle class population is pivoting towards depending demanding more washing machines or lopten's products, that one is a social cultural shift. And the fact that the market as a result is becoming more competitive with players entering into that, it means there is a societal embrace of these particular what? products. Now, do we have a, a KPI which is measuring that? As I said, one period KPI might not be sufficient, but trends in market share may also indicate that. Because market share would be indicating that as the society as the society is shifting and demanding more of our products, what proportion is going with our uh, is, is that demanding more washing machines? Which proportion is going with our washing machines? You get that. Then technology, and I'm sure technology, you got it, you you zeroed it warm well. You we are being told that the bill and market is greatly competitive. We are told that there are co international competitors entering in this bill and market. And again, what are they doing? They are producing products similar to Chief. And also there is another international competitor who is considering entering into this market again with a product similar to Porsche. So these are innovations. It's an innovative marketplace. Other competitors are also innovating. A, or they are coming up with new products. Now, how do we have a KPI which measures this? You know, when you are saying technology, technology doesn't necessarily mean new products only. That, that's the common mistake which students make. When they hear of technology, they would say, since there is no new product introduced, perhaps. So our technological prowess can be measured using a consumer awards one, like in this case. Consumer awards one may measure techno whether how, how, how technologically superior our products are. Also, uh, we can measure our technological progress by, you know, profitability, profit measure, trends in profitability. Why trends in profitability? It's because Technology has got implications on cutting down on costs of production. You know, if you are embracing technology, in final analysis, we expect your costs of production to fall. You can't say I'm embracing technology when your costs of production are rising. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an antithesis of what technology is. Technology has, has, a, has a remarkable impact on the firm on a gradual decrease in costs over time as, as it is embraced. So trends in profit, we can have trends in profits as a guide on how technological this particular marketplace is. Um, okay, I can see Chris, Chris Penn is typing. Yes, again, quiet. Or oh, since I have since I've I, I have stopped talking, you can you can unmute and talk to yourself. Either way, it's still fine. Th thank you very much. Uh, can we also consider quality cost as uh, a KPI for technological changes? Or yes, uh, the issue is you need to make sure your your words are. Your words uh, are not like saying it is. You may say it may indicate because it's a matter of the choice of words that is used. You, you are trying to link that this KPI is addressing technological issue. Yes, you may say as the firm is 
the amount spent on quality on quality costs may actually give us how the firm is trying to improve the quality of the washing machines and this may be done by embracing new technologies it's an issue of risk of giving your reason justification reason justification or if you if you realize that there is no kpi which is like addressing an issue say it out bluntly to say the current kpi is there's nothing which is addressing this or you can say there is a remote a relationship between this uh, external environmental variable with the existing kpis right why you know why why you say this is because it will then help you in conclusion you know every report needs conclusion so when you were saying something yes crispin unmute okay uh okay so it's, it's, uh, it's th th thank you very much uh, if i decided to say there is no kpi which seems to measure uh, uh performance area one two three but uh, the examiner thinks that they are uh, am i going to be bad uh, correct um no wonder why i said there's an element of choosing your words rightly choose your words right we may clearly for political there for political you can see there's nothing uh, for political there's nothing whether the examiner thinks there is one, but actually, really on political, there is nothing. So on that one, if you are clearly seeing that there is nothing, you you say you say there seems to be no KPI. There seems the word seems leaves the room for an alternative argument. And like a person who said there is there is no right away. You know, you say from the current set of KPIs, there seems to be no KPI which adequately address these political and environmental variables facing the company. You, you, you have put it in such a way that you say you can say there is some, but it's not adequate for me to mention it. So it's a matter of playing around with words. I'm sure you are answered. All right. Okay. Then next, next question. You know, I, I, I today you know last week I promised that I don't want to talk too much. But uh, whenever I begin to teach, I find myself talking too much. You know, perhaps that's why I'm a tutor. I, I like talking. Now they want you. You know, the report must also part number three take each critical success factor in 10 evaluate how the suggested kpi fit to the critical success factors given evaluate how the suggested kpis fit to the critical success factors given so you come to the question here these are the critical success factors and amongst the questions that they've asked they are saying also it should evaluate how the kpis fit with the critical success factors which have been selected you know this is a very good question it's like it's a goodness of fit test or it's a strategic fitness of a kpi to what we want to do in other words as, as the bodies driving the company using these critical success factors or performance dimensions dimensions of performance which we want to be known for that critical success factor those aspects of performance we need to excel for our position in the market to be sustained as we are using those ones to drive the company forward the measure the the metrics we are measuring are they suitable in other words you need to understand that KPIs are for board, are at board level. Critical success factors are at board level. Do we have KPIs which are fit to this at board level? Now, when you are evaluating K crit a fitness of critical success factors, uh, I mean KPIs to critical success factors, the question is, take each critical success factor in 10, meaning you do it one one. 
you you take say to obtain dominant market presence that's our critical success factor then you say do we have kpis which are fit which are really fitting for that particular critical success factor so i want you again to do the same uh, this one doesn't even require you to you, you you get you can get everything from here to here everything from here to here that would be that you can the, the, the three are the critical success factors, and these are the key, key, key performance indicators, these ones, which are listed here. They are KPIs. So I want you to, so what I want you to do is, I want you to take each critical success factor here and tell me, do we have KPIs which fit in those critical success factors? Can we be, start typing? Each one by one in ten until you get to the end. You know you have to justify why you don't. I don't want an answer which is saying dominate market presence. Then you say market share. No, that one is not. You need to tell me in what way market share has connotations of dominant market presence. In what way, in what way can the board using market share satisfy themselves that there's dominant market presence? In what way? Have you gotten this, this part right? After saying dominant market presence, you need to tell me, if I'm a board member, in what way will I know or use market share to tell me that there is dominant market presence? In what way will I use market share? I'm, I'm already telling you the answer. You type. That's perfect. You guys are typing. You know, right? I'm happy to see you guys typing. You know, we do it deliberate to say type. We acknowledge the fact that your exam is computer based. So if I teach and I, I don't from time to time encourage you to type, I'm not doing justice to you. I have to somehow encourage you just to type. Even if I know you could just have opened, you know, unmute and talk to your say, but it's deliberate. It's deliberate from your say. You know, there's a difference between what you type and what you can say. So I encourage you to type so that you train to say what you are typing. That kind of thing. All right. Okay, uh, you are taking each critical success factor in turn. Remember, there are three critical success factors there. Identify critical success factor. Tell us. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. So, ah, okay. Continue typing. I don't want to deprive you of the opportunity to participate. 
Continue typing, guys. You know, you guys are stars. You you know these things. At least, at least there's there's a remarkable improvement now. There's a very very remarkable improvement. Only if you can promise me that you do you do so in the exam. Take a deep breath. Write what is in the case. That's that's all you need. Take a deep breath. Focus your points with what we have in the case that's what you need okay all right okay i'm just giving you a minute now to try to finish your typing at least I, I I'm already answered on what I wanted to on what I wanted on that one. Judging from how you guys are typing. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, you can. Uh, it's 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 fine, Musondo and Crispin. You can now press enter. At least I, 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 I need an indication of do you guys really appreciate what is involved? <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, guide, you are still typing. Okay. Now, here's the deal. All your answers are correct, and I like them from being uh, on being correct because you were trying to actually restrict to the to the case. You were not overdoing it. So, like, like dominant market presence. That that is one KPI to obtain dominant market presence. So, ma market presence you can measure it using market share. Trends in market. Actually, you say uh, because the question is, if we say is this fit for the critical success factor, is this KPI fit? We are saying, in what way, as a board member, can I use this KPI to drive the company forward? So clearly, you would say dominant is a relative term because the word dominant requires a comparator. The word dominant requires a comparator. So uh, market share, because we are based on the actions, the total volume of all participants in the market, the share of the volume, tra trends in market share over time. Make sure I put the word trends. Will tell, will tell us whether we are dominant or not. And for this current year, for this current year, market share for Porsche is 33%. Which can be judged to be dominant, but in the absence of comparator, in the absence of comparator information, because notice they are just two major, two major, uh, they are just two major manufacturers here, which are currently operating, and one large international. So if we say two major manufacturers and one large international who are now in this market, it means plus log 10, this makes it four. This makes it four. So with four major manufacturers, log 10 included in b -Land, we can judge a market share of 33% to be large or to be dominant. Notice how say brings it to the case. I know your answers are correct, bring it to the, to the case. Who brought it to the case, um, Rosman? Uh, dominant market share, I saw you bring into the case, which is correct. 
You said Porsche has obtained about a third of the market share, meaning its major presence in that market. So you say you did you you tried to bring it to the case in the, in that part approach. You say out of four competitors, two major, which are local local in and one international, which recently joined plus Porsche, four major combat four major competitors, and locked in when it comes to Porsche, it is one third, slightly a third of market share, actually exactly a third actually. So we can which can be judged to be like. And then um, for Chiefu, it's twelve percent clearly. It's not being dominant in this regard. Out of four major competitors in Chiefu, it's 12. Dominant. Above all, we need trends in this market share for it to be fit with the critical success factor. You know, then another is maximizing profit without taking risks, without uh, taking much risk. Actually, what is the what is the correct wedding? It's it's important to get the correct wedding. Maximize profits without within acceptable risk. That's the correct wedding. Now, if you are doing that, I need to check your answers here. What you can measure it with, right? Crispin, you typed it that maximizing profit within acceptable risk can be measured by total profits uh, made by Lopten. This will indicate efficiency, yes. But we, we can only say profit is maximized if we had a target. You know, there are two conditions for, for us to say profit is being maximized. First, we need a target. We need a target to say if we have beaten the target, we have maximized. So you are saying, as you can act, because you are typing a report, you can say as discussed in the absence of a comparator or in the absence of a target. Or you say directors need to obtain a comparator or a target to, for us to, 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 to know whether these profits are being maximized. Also, trends in selling prices. If selling prices are actually increasing, or what the behavior, the selling prices we are charging can indicate whether we are maximizing profit or not can or not like it is but it can or may indicate don't don't use definitive words like it will uh, no just say trends in profitability trends in in what in selling in sales prices or even contribution can tell us how efficient we are in saving costs and maximizing profits all these all these are possible answers so i'm happy with that and then it is saying within acceptable risk. So the risk measure there that we have is margin of safety. You know, margin of safety means how much can sales volume fall before we break even. So if margin of safety is 30%, what they are telling you is sales volume can decrease by 30% for you to break even. So that's margin of safety, and you know, it 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 is telling you it is it is actually yeah margin of safety is telling us that because margin of safety is 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 a forward looking metric. It tells us that going forward, how much are we expecting our sales to fall if costs remain unchanged for us to break even? So this one is a risk measure. That one is a risk measure. To an extent, it's a risk measure. But one-year figures alone require a trend in marginal survey, considering that competition is actually increasing. So there's need to calculate this marginal survey on a trend, on a yearly basis, to see the direction we are taking. Then maintain the brand image for above average quality products. Maintain the brand image for above average quality products. You know, you know, there they might, they might be KPIs which are, which are, if you are selling a quality product, normally if you are selling a quality product, it translates into your market share. You know, they are, it's, it's, it might, there might be a relationship within the quality. You know, if I'm giving, if I'm not teaching good, 
it, I, 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 I can see that by loss of students. I can, I can tell if I'm not getting students, it might be a chance. It may, it, it, it's an indicator, actually, that I need to improve on the quality of the services we are offering. So under a circumstance where we have quality costs, market share, and awards won, these might, might actually be indicators. But notice the critical success factor. It is saying maintain. It is saying maintain. You, then you have to tell the examiner that when the critical success factor is saying maintain, it's, a, it's an aspect of trend. These words are important. Maintain means you can't tell it over one year. Do you know that you can win an award, but you were the last? Are you not seeing there are, there are four competitors? Cheerful won one award. But don't, th do, do you, you know that if you just win an award, we, and you are not given figures on how your competitors fared, you can't necessarily tell that you, it's an above average quality product in the absence of competition. So there's need for comparator or competitor results for directors to know whether this KPI is fit. Are you getting it? For directors to know whether I can, I can they use this KPI to fit into this critical success factor? They need comparator information. Another issue is quality costs. Though quality costs may indicate what we are doing in terms of quality, but quality costs, they need to be categorized into their component costs. You know that? You know, imagine I, if I pay a fine of 10 million and you train your employees for 2 million and then we call those quality costs, but you know my costs are external failure costs. 10 million was a fine or penalty, but you just spent 2 million to train your employees. Now, if, if, if we are just using quality costs in absolute figures, they are of little use because it would appear as if I am spending more on quality, yet what, what, what I did was a penalty. So going forward, it's, it's like, I may run up short of cash. I may strain my liquidity because of this fine. I may end up closing. But you spend little. It was just two million, but it was for training of your employees. So quality costs in absolute terms, they don't mean much. You are telling directors that. If you want to maintain above average quality products, using quality costs alone in absolute totals, they don't mean much. They need to be categorized into their component parts to assess their relative importance. Are we together? So I have spoken market share awards and stuff and quality costs. You know, that's what, you know, these reasonings are reasonings which make this subject advanced performance management subject. These are the actual reason why the subject is called advanced performance management. If a person who evaluates performance at advanced level doesn't take things at face value. To say awards won. So awards won, they are saying maintain brand image for above average. Why are you leaving other words un unread? Read every word you tell. They are saying maintain brand image for above average product. So if you say awards one, yes, we can win award and it has got connotations on quality. But are we saying it's above? Are we saying we are maintaining? This would require trends. You are telling directors. Otherwise, directors may not establish trend and using this KPI without a comparator. They require trends, or if, because it's a competitive marketplace, we need to know comparator data. If they are just expending on quality costs and stuff, and thinking that the higher amount of quality costs means you are doing more quality, tell them that, look, quality costs, to, for us to say this is sustainable in maintaining, it depends on which aspect of quality costs are we spending the money on. Are we spending the money on internal failure costs, external failure costs, appraisal prevention costs? 
This is what is need. We need total breakdown of quality costs for us to evaluate relative importance of their component parts. You, you tell directors that. Now, if you see such a question, you, you then say, I ask you a simple question. Were quality costs examined in today's exam? You say, no, I said there was no quality costs. If, if it was they say I was going to get it right. You know, quality costs is in check. Yet you are having this, you know, when you are answering like the way I'm saying, you you are or you'll be what is called signaling your virtue to the examiner. That is these are these points are known as virtue signaling. You know, the, the examiner will begin to know that even if I had asked the question on quality costs, separate question, this student was going to get it right. The student, the examiner will know, already this examiner is profiling your virtue to this particular exam. The examiner already knows that this student knows. But in your knowing, you are applying. Why, you may say, say, can you tell us where have you applied on quality costs? Because they are given as totals. They are saying total quality costs. Total is, is of little use to the director unless it is analyzed into its four component parts. That's it. I have applied because in the case they are saying total. So I'm now demystifying that. Can we really drive the companies in total quality costs or they are of different relative importance? That's up the application I'm talking about. <clears throat> right? Then the other part is saying, assess the extent to which the, KP, the suggested KPIs would be suitable for planning rather than controlling. Assess the extent to which the suggested KPIs would be suitable for planning rather than controlling. Yeah, I want you to make use of the chat feature and tell me what, why, why, what is a controlling KPI? What is a planning KPI? So you say controlling. Can you even separate with commas to say a controlling KPI, write something comma, something comma, planning KPI before we, we come to the quick question. Just answer me on those two. What do we mean really when you're saying KPIs, these are planning KPIs, these are controlling KPIs? What do we mean? Can you type, guys? No, today, as I said, we are just doing it together. We are we are doing you 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 are, you are doing it with your say. What do we mean? I mean, you guys are typing. Suppose you just want to tell your neighbor that this is a planning KPI. What do we mean by that? Right, you guys are stars. I'm seeing your answers here. Continue typing. Okay. All right. Now, proceed guide, you may press enter. Okay, fine. You are you 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 are right in telling me that controlling KPIs they are they are historic 
with planning KPIs are like futuristic and they are to do with long term if the direction of the entity. Oh, and, and normally controlling KPIs, they provide feedback. Their main purpose is to provide feedback. And and so so you only control if you had set a standard. You only control if you had set a standard so that you you know whether the action you are taking is a corrective action or not. Planning KPIs, they hope the, they, they have got implications of what we have to do going forward. What we have to do going forward. So they may be in financial terms and also in non-financial terms. Like if, if you take, for example, margin of safety, for example, it means if you are asked to interpret margin of safety to your neighbor, you simply say margin of safety means going forward, our sales need to decrease by this much for us to break even. So margin of safety is a planning is a, is more of a planning KPI. It's more of a planning KPI. Um, you know, awards one, awards one, yeah, that one is also planning KPIs are about putting in place measures so that we we deliver future success. So if you are giving directors information about awards one, this is an element of though it it, it gives you feedback, but it more it mostly propels you to do better in future, isn't it so? Awards one, though it tells you that you have won this award, but the implication of awards one is to prepare to propel you going forward. So awards one triggers future value creation. You can you can agree with that. Awards knowledge of awards one triggers you to act for the future. So it's more about planning KPIs again. KPIs again. But majority of the KPIs there, if 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 a market share is got is balanced between both planning and controlling as well. But because market share makes use of external data, it pivots more towards planning and less towards controlling market share. Because after you know your market share, you have you then have to do something. So it's a, it's, a, it's more of a planning KPI. But majority of the KPIs there are feedback KPIs, meaning they give an, they give us an indication of how well we have performed. So they are more of controlling KPIs. So out of about 11 or so KPIs, majority of the KPIs are controlling KPIs. So this was this was about. Oh, sorry. Please mute. May you mute? Yes, I'm done. Right. Uh, this person we saying. Uh, this same that Ogu Bunda say say what bosha. They are both types. Right. Right. So I'm seeing here quite a lot. They just joined, but they are not live. It's not fair. And all these are not live. I trust you are all intending to play the video, which is the beauty of online learning anyway. Beautiful online learning is that the video will be available, so I don't, I don't to a large extent um, complain. All right. So, are you not seeing? We are. These are called performance measurement systems. You know, these questions are the same paper in, paper out, but the animal changes its color. In one question, it, it comes and says, balance the scorecard, you know? In another question, it comes and says, performance pyramid. In another question, it comes and says, building blocks. Clearly, they are simply saying, your KPIs, are they sufficient to drive your company forward? Isn't it so in final analysis? 
If someone is saying balance the scorecard, he's simply asking you your KPIs to be balanced between financial and non-financial planning and controlling. It's the same. Building blocks, you are also being told that we have to look at dimensions, the rewards, and all this is about achieving our critical success factors. Performance pyramid, you are also being told about how we can excel at operational level is tactical to deliver our strategic goals. Either way, you are being asked the same question, but the context then changes depending on the scenario you are given. But these are actually the same questions. APM never changes. But case study, the cases in the end, they do change. Close your, you will have to close your eyes and say, my say told me that I should not write a point devoid of the scenario. I'm not answering a peer. That is key. Okay. Then next. Next question is, now as I said, these questions were just selected, zones. Now let me read zones question. Zones is an overnight parcel delivery, uh, is, is an overnight parcel delivery business. Since it was founded by the current CEO, it has grown rapidly due to, due to a boom in online shopping. It has grown rapidly due to a boom in online shopping. It now operates 1,000 delivery vehicles of different sizes. Recently, financial performance and market share have deteriorated. Notice, this is where you need to know. Recently, financial performance and market share have deteriorated. Zones has no clear corporate vision. It has got an excessive focus on financial objectives and inadequate systems to measure and manage performance of the underlying processes which are driving its financial success or its financial performance. So there you go. Business model. Zones collection and delivery service uses delivery vehicles to transport parcels to and from local depots and individual addresses. The vehicles may also pick up parcels from the addresses to which they deliver, so they can deliver parcel and pick another parcel as well. Each, ta each time the vehicle calls to pick up or to deliver parcel is known as a stop. And the time of the day for which the stop is booked, um, the time of the day for each stop is booked in advance. At the end of each day, vehicles along with any parcels not delivered, they return to the depot. Regardless of who, of who pays for the service, zones regards anyone to whom it delivers or from whom it picks up parcels as a customer. In the long term, the requirements of both of these groups are for a competitively priced, reliable, and flexible service to be similar. So in other words, you have that. Customers actually, they need these things. They just need competitively priced, reliable, and flexible delivery service. Now, performance, uh, performance improvement proposals. The CEO believes that reductions in customer satisfaction and flexibility caused, caused by a decline in operational performance may have led to recent deterioration in performance and in, in financial performance in market share. It has been suggested that Zones, uh, zones use the linear cross performance pyramid in Appendix 1 to reverse this deterioration. So they want to use performance pyramid to, re to reverse this deterioration and come up with operational new KPIs for measuring operational performance. The CEO has stated that zones corporate vision sh should be to increase market, to increase shareholder wealth by becoming a leading overnight parcel delivery business, providing quality, reliability, and value to our customers. So 
so this is the this is their new mission and vision this is like their corporate vision now it is also proposed to use demic define measure analyze improve and control method to implement six sigma methodology to improve the quality of delivery two measures have been defined in appendix 3 which may help zones delivery performance now i want you to notice something so this is the lynch and cross performance pyramid and these are the suggested measures for operational performance operational you need to know which one is operational you know performance pyramid can be labeled it can be labeled the top part is corporate level this part here where they are saying market market and financial normally this is like business unit level customer flexibility and productivity that processes and departmental or personal level or operational level that's the first part the first level here which is like quality delivery cycle time and waste these are operations this will be market share customer satisfaction flexibility they can group it to be business unit level and then corporate level at the top there that's a performance pyramid so i don't want a situation where you say say i have never heard of performance pyramid before i only saw it in an exam yes you know at at 8 apm level it doesn't matter at apm level that is not an excuse because when we give you a, a, a framework for performance measurement or management, we, we tell you what, is, what it is. So even if you have never heard about performance, a Crispin already know performance pyramid. Rosemary doesn't know it, but both are writing the exam. So Chris he knows it and he has claimed it and he has understood it maybe he has not claimed it but you know what is involved rosemary has never heard about it but sees it in the exam like this you will notice that there is no difference between crispin and rosemary because everything that crispin knows which rosemary didn't know it's already given we, we, in an exam, we give you everything. So no wonder why we say knowledge of a model doesn't kill you, Max. To say, you can't scratch your head and say, by the way, performance pyramid, what does it include? It includes delivery, cycle, time, waste, you know, quality, customer satisfaction. No, you are, you are actually wasting time, your time on things which do not matter. Because in the exam, we give you. So imagine. You were already taking up your memory space of your mind by by trying to to draw a pyramid, which will simply give you in the exam. So why 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 were you bothering yourself? So they now have these two suggested measures, actually three. They are saying they now have measures for of operational performance. Operational means this level here. So these measures they apply at operational level at that level. So there is average utilization like vehicle utilization they're saying it's average utilization of all vehicle capacity this is measured by taking the average vehicle load as a percentage of capacity when the vehicle leaves the depot at the beginning of each day and the vehicle load as a percentage of capacity when the vehicle returns to the depot at the end of each day capacity is measured either according to the internal volume or length of the vehicle depending on the type of the vehicle being used fuel consumption this is merely average That's liters it. of fuel per kilometer traveled for all vehicles oh sorry guys may you mute may you mute the one on the phone guys then on time stops on time stops this is the percentage of stops made within 30 minutes of the booked time Percentage of stops made within 30 minutes of the booked time. So guys, whenever we we have you you help me to mute uh, those we have background noises. And then 
um, another it's so so on time stops are those stops or pickups or delivery when you deliver or pick up parcel to a customer but within 30 minutes of the booked time now zones receives complaints relating to deliveries not made on time of these less than 0.001 percent relate to deliveries made within 30 minutes so you know, if you are asked 0.0001% as a fraction, it's 1 over 1 million. That's what it means. If you add, yes, it's 1 over, over 1 million. Uh, 1 divided by 1 million. Yes. It's actually 0.0001%. So what does this figure tell you? It simply means currently one in a million person is complaining. With these, with our part sales getting there within 30 minutes, we are receiving complaints one in a million. It's as good as it's not, there's no complaint. It's as good as customers are happy with that. If it's one in a million. Now, suggested new measures for improving quality of delivery using DMIC methodology. Now, it, suppose you don't know what DMIC methodology, you, we give you again, so there's no need for you to, we tell you what DMIC means, so don't even bother to say, I know DMIC, and then I ask you, what do you know about DMIC? You then say, define, measure, analyze, improve, that, that one is that you, it, 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 it's, it's as good as anyone can know that because in the exam we tell you what it is. So don't don't worry about that. You all you need to know is application. Now they are also suggesting measuring service quality using DMIC methodology. You know, Six Sigma makes use of DMIC methodology. So they want to measure on time stops if they are coming within 10 minutes of the book the time if they are within 10 minutes of the booked time, and then failed deliveries. The, this is the percentage of deliveries which cannot be made due to the customer being unavailable to take delivery or by parcels being incorrectly addressed. Currently, 5% of deliveries are failed and they have to be returned to the depot. So we do have three appendices actually. So let us get, let, let us get to the question. Question number one says, advise the CEO how Lynch Cross Performance Pyramid can help zones achieve its corporate vision. Now, when, when you are answering such a question, you just, you need to view like you are talking to your CEO. You guys, you know your CEO. The CEO is telling you that, look, we, we, we have had issues with this company, guys. This company had, had no mission, had no state mission over the years. Notice, the Kamaman is, he has experienced deterioration financial and market share, financial performance and market share. And the company had no clear corporate vision and it has excessive focus on financial objectives. And it has got inadequate systems to even measure and manage the airline success so you want performance pyramid is. because performance pyramid notice the examiner well, you know the examiner takes pains to give you the answer in the question but the moment you 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 try to think on your own you 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 slide away from the answer you know these problems are being are suggested to be solved using performance pyramid. So clearly, if I am in my CEO's office and the CEO says, you know, we were at that seminar and you had the presenter talking about performance pyramid. Tell me, how can performance pyramid help us to achieve our corporate vision? That's, I being the CEO, I am asking you, I am not asking you what a performance pyramid is. I'm not asking you what a performance pyramid is. Because 
what it is uh, is given already by the examiner. So don't begin to tell us that performance pyramid show. Uh, no, 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 no. So you simply say the new mission. Actually, this new pyramid is 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 coming on the backdrop of the new new vision. So you you are in the CEO's office. Relax. Tell your CEO, don't tell, tell your CEO to say the new vision for our company is to increase shareholder wealth by becoming leading overnight parcel delivery business, providing quality, reliability, and value for our customers. This is the new vision. The performance pyramid then tells us how this vision is achieved by breaking it into business unit targets and operational targets. In other words, the, the vision cascades downwards from the pyramid. And, you know, the performance metrics to be done or the targets, they are set upwards or performance, it escalates upwards with the corporate vision cascades downwards. Not having a performance pyramid has resulted in us having a deteriorating financial performance and market share. They have deteriorated. Now, the performance pyramid will, will, will be helpful because it provides us with a platform to measure, it with, it with platform to have systems, adequate systems, to measure and manage performance of the underlying processes which drive financial success. In other words, performance pyramid views financial performance and market share as a result. It views market share and financial performance as a result. And therefore, it helps us to understand what is it that as a company we need to do at operational and business unit level to achieve those results. In other words, the processes which underlie success. Customers, regardless of whether of, of, of the generic nature of our customers, they require, you come here, our customers require, our, they're saying in the long term, the requirements for both of these groups, like competitively priced, reliability, flexibility, will be similar. So our customers require competitively priced delivery service, reliable and flexible delivery service. Now, these will need then to be embedded in the performance measurement system, and the performance pyramid will help us do the same. There are measures of flexibility at business unit level, there's measure of flexibility, which will address the requirements of our, of our customers. Our customers, they need competitively priced. So if we reduce waste and improve on quality and delivery, this will, waste reduction will result in productivity. We will be utilizing more the resources we have. And the, 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 the efficiencies associated with productivity will actually result in financial success, thereby reversing the recent trends which we have suffered, leading to us re reaching our corporate vision. On the other hand, delivery and quality of our delivery parcels, they result in customer satisfaction. And if we are flexible enough, as this is the demand of customers, it will enable us to achieve our market goals and ultimately achieve our vision. Are you not seeing? It's like it's like I it's like I have a pen and my CEO is sitting across the desk, and the pyramid is on a piece of paper. I am uh, the CEO has given me the vision. I am telling the CEO how each part of the pyramid helps us to achieve the vision. It's, it's like I'm being practical. Can you, can you note that? Please, can you note that? I'm, I am not, I am not, I am not like 
busy explaining to the CEO what the pyramid is. I am explaining to the CEO how we can use the pyramid to achieve our vision. Our vision. So when I'm explaining to the CEO, it is important to bring to the attention of the CEO the context or the current or recent events that we are facing or the challenges which are peculiar to our company, which have necessitated is the, the need for this pyramid and how this pyramid is going to solve that. That is how a pyramid can help zones. It's not like how you can use a pyramid. It's a how pyramid can help zones. So you need, the, because they are saying how pyramid can help zones, you need to tell, you, to tell the CEO zones specific information which will be addressed by the pyramid. Okay. Next. So don't waste time saying, oh, what, how does a performance pyramid look like? No. Performance pyramid, whether you entered the exam knowing it or you didn't know it, it doesn't matter. So you can't come here and say, say, I, you didn't teach me about performance pyramid. I only saw it in the exam. You know at your level that it is application which matters. So clearly you can tell this is a pyramid here. Vision is the eye. So, you know, it's like it's like the pyramid on the dollar knot where you have to build, to build, to build until you can see what you were supposed to see. That's, that's the eye, the vision. So clearly, you, you build it from above. You grow. Up, up, you, 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 your performance feeds upwards the pyramid, whereas targets cascade downwards the pyramid. That is the long and short of it. And you, you can see that it has got internal efficiencies, like cycle time and waste. These are internal efficiencies. And it has got external effectiveness, like quality and delivery. So there's external effectiveness and internal efficiencies. Now, notice, I'm no longer answering the question. I'm now explaining the pyramid. But that was not the part of the question. The part of the question I've answered already. OK. Like, if you improve on cycle time and waste, you, you, you do it right on flexibility and productivity, and this will feed to your financial success. Quality and delivery will result in customer satisfaction and address your market concerns. Ultimately, this will result in the achievement of corporate vision. Okay. Now, the other point is, the other part of the question says, Using the performance pyramid, evaluate the extent to which the suggested KPIs can be used to measure and manage operational performance. You know, there are two, there are two ways here. They can be used to measure and manage. Do you, do you, do you really know the distinction between the two? Evaluate whether these two, the, the suggested KPIs, can, can be used to measure and manage, not, not strategic, but operational performance at zones. So you need to know what is operational performance. For you to answer this question, you need to know what is operational performance. Uh, on, this one, on this one, you have to relax because, because this part of the question, guide uh, Chris, uh, Chris Penn, the this part of the question, you can't read it in any textbook, no. You can only have to listen to your say as I'm applying what I know to this scenario. You can only apply to answer this question. Not like you can say, I need to go to a textbook and read the performance pyramid because whatever you read there, it cannot be asked in this question. So what is required is, they may, don't, don't have this issue of saying, I have never heard of building blocks. I'm seeing it in an exam. Because we tell you what it is in the exam. All you have to tell us now is to apply it. The, quest, the, the gist of the question is simply saying, can the suggested KPIs measure operational performance? So all you have to do is to come to the pyramid. Now, notice, this is Appendix 2. How many KP, suggested KPIs do we have? There are three. Vehicle utilization, one. Fuel consumption, two. Uh, On-time stops, 
three. So these are the three and the nine marks, meaning you are going to tell us information which is enough for three marks on each. Don't overdo it. Information which is three marks for each. So they are saying these three are being used to measure operational performance. I told you that the first line here is what is called operational level. This is what we are just looking for. So you need to know which ones are these things measuring. So you need to tell us what is it at operational performance that this is measuring. For example, tell me, at operational performance, what is, what is vehicle utilization measuring? At operational performance, what is vehicle utilization measuring? Type on the chat feature. I, I want you to type, tell me what vehicle utilization is measuring, fuel consumption is measuring, on time stops is measuring. You, you type this and say it is measuring this, this it is measuring this, this it is measuring this. Can you do that? I expect you guys to be typing. To say vehicle, you now know the operational performance there. So I want you to type to tell me vehicle utilization is measuring what of the operational performance. Fuel consumption is measuring what of the operational performance. On time stops is measuring what of the, which part of the operational performance. Continue typing. Right. Right, let me check what I've got. Oh, you guys are stars. Okay. Vehicle utilization is measuring delivery on time, is measuring quality. Uh, okay. Okay. You, you, you have almost said it, guys in the interest of time. Okay, now notice vehicle utilization measures delivery. Vehicle utilization measures delivery. Vehicle utilization measures waste. Fuel consumption measures waste. Uh, fuel consumption measures waste. Vehicle utilization measures cycle time. Fuel consumption measures waste on time stops measures delivery uh, on time stops measures quality vehicle utilization measures okay so now you have all this okay okay guys we are, we are, we are correcting this uh, you know there is no one size fits all to this don't think the examiner has got a scientific answer to this it's a matter of justification now but let me come to the question the question is saying measure and manage operational performance at zones, the, the words I have highlighted need to be answered. So you'll be telling the examiner that there is measure and there is manage. There is measure and there is manage. Now, most students, you focus your answer on measure. You ignore manage. So as you say, I need to tell you that your subject is not only performance management, it's also performance measurement. You measure and then manage. Now, when you are saying management, we are saying the system you put in place for measurement, is it manageable? Can you rely on it and say this is adequate going forward? Isn't this system subject to criticism? Uh, like management is, can this be used going forward? Measure, it's fine, you can measure it, but after measuring it, can, it, we, can, it, can we use it going forward? Take, for example, when you are answering this question, because you, you, you need to take operational performance measures each at once. Some were saying vehicle utilization means delivery. 
to an extent, yes, because we are using vehicles to deliver. Some were saying vehicle utilization means uh, is an element of waste. Yes, because vehicles are resources we have. So if we are not utilizing resources well, we might be wasting those resources. I, I will notice I am, I am writing this, what I'm saying I'm writing. To say vehicle utilization may have a connotation of waste because these are the resources we are having. So the extent to which we are utilizing the resource is a measurement of whether we are being wasteful or not at operational level. When I have said that, I have said, I have addressed measurement part, but I have not addressed management part. So it is the management part that you should pay attention now. Management is now saying, the system we are using to measure, is it feasible? No wonder why there is a question which is saying evaluation. And this one, you don't get it in a textbook. All you have to do is to listen and relax. Now, description. Vehicle utilization for all, for all vehicle capacity. This is measured by taking average of vehicle load, average of vehicle load as a percentage of total of capacity when the vehicle leaves in the beginning of each day, and a vehicle load as a percentage of capacity when the vehicle returns at the beginning, at the end of each day. Capacity is measured according to either internal volume of the vehicle or length of the vehicle, depending on the type of the vehicle being used. You know what? When things are expressed in English, they look nice. When, when, when things are expressed in, you know, English, English, English at times, it gives some of the things platitudes where things are not good. What they are saying, Rosemary, is they are saying they have got trucks and they want to measure vehicle utilization. But here is how they are doing it. They say if the vehicle is leaving the gate at the boom gate, they measure the contents or the capacity of the vehicle it has as a percentage of what it can carry. And when the vehicle is coming in, they measure the percentage of the load it has as a, capacity, as a percentage of what it can carry. And they call that they have utilized the, the vehicle. But are you noticing that there is an error in that measurement? You may say, say, where is the error? If a vehicle departs empty and goes to Norton, and carry load from Norton to Blauwile, and it comes back empty, they will say it has zero capacity at the beginning, it has zero capacity at the end. So as with this method of measurement, the driver is said to have wasted the truck, yet the driver got uh, left empty, picked delivery Norton, delivered blow oil and brought the truck empty. According to this measurement, they are simply saying when it is leaving, what it is carrying as a percentage of its capacity, to this driver, they will say zero. When it is coming, what is it carrying as a percentage of its capacity, to this driver, they again say zero. So they will say the, the truck was never used. But suppose there is another person who is driving the truck and you take the truck loaded in the garage, it is loaded 30 tons. So they will say 100% utilization. And, the, and there is a breakdown along uh, Workington there. The truck has a breakdown and you bring it back to the garage. They will again say it was utilized 100% when it went out and when it came in. Yet it did not deliver the load anyway because of their system of measurement. But if the truck left the empty, picked the load in Marondera, deli delivered it in Toko, and, 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 and got back to the garage empty, they will say it wasn't utilized. This aspect of understanding now, Crispin, is what is called performance management, not measurement this time. This is now management, meaning we need vehicle utilization as a measure. Yes, we need it because it addresses wastage. It addresses what? But is the 
is the, is what how we are going about it manageable is it sustainable to to have it as a system going forward can you can you can you give me feedback that say i have noted it the answer is hidden is hidden the answer is hidden in the manner in which the points are given because otherwise you may think i need to read the textbooks on on, on performance pyramid yet yet you are getting the answer is hidden there It's actually hidden. Yes, yes. Ah. Uh -huh. So are you not see? So so you would notice the reason why we, the reason why we could pick up the answer there is because we read it slowly. We read it slowly. So notice, Crispin. This understanding now makes no difference. Whether you got in the, into the exam knowing performance pyramid or you didn't, it makes no difference. Even if I, I didn't know what performance pyramid is, I could still function. If I'm told, if I'm told how they're measuring it, how they're measuring it, is this manageable going forward? Meaning, can we really pay bonus to people? A person who takes the truck empty and brings it empty whilst there was intermittent deliveries in the in between, such a person is said to have wasted the vehicle because of this measurement. Such a person will not get bonus. In other words, it's not manageable. No wonder why we say to measure and to manage operational performance. Make sure you address both parts of the question. Next. It's um okay oh we are still on each on each measure one by one so as, as you have said as i have said you you take about measure so like fuel consumption fuel consumption is in at operational level it's about waste again fuel consumption is about waste it it, it is because if you are if, if if we are not utilizing fuel well as a company it means we are wasting a resource so you first tell the CEO that yes, at operational level we can use this measure fine. But the way we are measuring it is it manageable? Can we now manage performance going forward with this approach? They are saying these vehicles. There are now thousands of vehicles of different sizes. So they they they, they differ in terms of length, volume, type, etc. So if they are measuring fuel consumption, what they are doing is they are simply saying total liters for the day divided by total kilometers traveled. Can you measure that? Can you use that really in a company say you like you are unifreight? You want to measure fuel utilization, you just say, Oh, our trucks both both wonder fit, the the, the haulage trucks, everything. How many total kilometers they have traveled and how many total liters they have used? You, ju you just say total liters over total kilometers and you say, I am measuring and managing my fuel well. Where is the weakness in that? Tell me, where is the weakness in that, in that approach? Can we really use that approach for measurement going forward? If we make you a manager at Unifred, you are a, you are a performance analyst at, at Swift. Do you and you see that that's how they are measuring fuel consumption? They are just adding all kilometers divided uh, divided divide that into all liters used. Each vehicle has got different fuel capacity. Yes. Different vehicles have different fuel consumption rates. Yes. Yes. Another thing is, another thing is, they don't even consider where that vehicle was traveling to. And now get get this for example. We both have wonder fit, in a, 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 because it's a parcel delivered company. Some parcels are being delivered with wonder fit. It's a very huge company. It has got a lot of things, a lot of trucks and delivered vehicles. Suppose you and I are given wonder fit, and then I just visit, say I visit, I I I I I I I, I, I well, for that day I go to I go to I visit my friends, for example. 
which are three kilometers away. And you take your vehicle and deliver a parcel at Avondale, which is almost three kilometers away. I'm talking, say, relative from where I am. So if you have that, according to this measure, we have used the same fuel because we have traveled almost the same distance. So according to this measure, we have performed well, you and I. But remember, I traveled to visit my friends and you were busy delivering parcels. So we don't want this as a measure. We, we need, there's a measure which we, in which we may say liters per kilometer per parcel delivered. You know, you can't, uh, do you know there's such a measure for those who run, say, buses? They say a bus carries 75 passengers and it travels 80 kilometers. They calculate liters per passenger kilometer traveled, meaning they multiply number of passengers by 80 to get total kilometers traveled by passengers, not, with, not by the bus, but by passengers. So they divide that by the number of passengers. Because if the bus is empty and you just say this over a over over 80 kilometers, you 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 won't tell whether this bus brought any money. But if you say per passenger kilometer, meaning number of passengers in a bus multiplied by 80 kilometers, you get total passenger kilometers, and then you say fewer over passenger kilometers. This way we know that the bus was delivering passengers. Not just saying fewer over 80 kilometers. We don't know. It, it traveled 80 kilometers with who? Where? We don't know. But if we say passenger kilometers, we begin to know now that there were passengers in the bus each traveling in total of after multiplying. And so this is how we use the fuel. So it will be liters per passenger kilometer. Not just liters for distance. Uh, you know, if I'm to work, if I'm if I'm to work for that company, you know, the company will lose will lose quite a lot. It will lose quite a lot because uh, if, if 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 it's on Saturday, I will take the car and you know, and uh, because I know there's no element of passenger kilometer traveled, I will utilize that car. I will, I will visit friends. I will go places and. You know, like like now another is on time stops. You now understand. You now understand. So on time stops, the extent to which you are stopping on time, it's an element of quality and also about deliveries. Because the stops are pick up or deliver points. Pick up and deliver points are called the stops. So the extent to which as a company we are picking up or delivering parcels on time is ideal. No wonder why we have on time stops. And clearly, uh, so far we are saying we have stopped, we have made deliveries on time. If we get there or we pick from there within 30 minutes of booked time. So currently, one in a million is complaining. One customer in a million is complaining. Meaning clearly, the number of complaints with this metric is negligible. So we can continue using it. Uh, this one appears to be working well. Are you not seeing that? Because we do have one in a million customer complaining about this new, this current arrangement. So this one for measurement, meaning 30 minutes of booked time and management, meaning one in a million of customers is complaining about this. So we can continue using this. Right. Oh, today you have learned. Ah, actually, I didn't know that this question would cause you to learn quite a lot. Quite a lot. I, I have not looked at management and, you know, I, I just opened it and I thought it's performance pyramid, but I'm not seeing it's ma measure and manage. So I have explained that part to you. Now, advise whether the two measures defined in Appendix 3 are suitable for use. In DMIC method to implement Six Sigma methodology in order in order to improve delivery performance. Now, this is not saying, you know, DMIC methodology means define. 
measure, analyze, improve, and control. Now, the other four, like Mike, are not required. The question is merely focusing on definition, on define only. So don't waste your time telling the examiner the other four. Like me, after defining, we then measure. After measure, we then analyze. After analyze, we then improve. After improve, we then control. All these other aspects are not asked because they are saying the advice whether two measures defined are suitable. So there are two, meaning four, four and a half marks on each. Now, you know what? When you are using the Mike methodology, there is this element of definition. Definition means you have to define or outline the quality parameters to, you have to determine the quality parameters or the dimensions of performance that you want to improve on. That you want to say, if we do this, we are creating value to the customer. That's definition. And according to DMIC methodology, if I come to your, if I come to Atlas Resources and I say I want to define parameters of quality, what I'm actually saying is, what I'm simply saying is, I want to, what I'm simply saying is, I want what what you need to define is what customers are currently complaining about. Oh, uh, Tim, if, if you can get this point right, you'll be you'll be you'll be a star on this one. If you come to Atlas and you want to improve, to find ways where you can define quality parameters, all you have to do is to attend to complaint register. Complaint register, if I can only get compla customer complaint register from your company, I can define quality parameters if I can get complaint register. Because it's a pity that we call them customer complaints. Actually, they are better known as pointers to things which need to be improved. They are known as pointers to dimensions of quality you need to work on. That's definition. So as a general rule, you define, you, you, you come up, you say, I am doing something which is of quality if customers have been complaining about it and you address it. You can't say you are, you come to Atlas and I tell you that one in a million is complaining and you are busy saying, I wanted to improve that. When, when I tell you that one in a million is complaining and then you say, I want to improve that. Ah, uh, can we pay you, Crispin? Notice, notice what this person is suggesting. Can you imagine? Already, according to Lynch and Cross, customers are okay with arriving within thirty minutes of booked time, and one in a million is complaining. And then we say, you then come and say, can you implement? Demand methodology, and then you say online on time stops, and then you say, I want to make it within 10 minutes of book the time. Ah. Are you are you are you telling us something that customers will see value? Customers will not see value with this because currently they are already not complaining about getting there in 30 minutes. So if you say I want to scale it back to 10 minutes of booked time and think you are making meaningful contribution. You are actually not, because customers will not see value in this. They are already happy within 30 minutes. So this one is not likely to contribute to quality and delivery to customers at operational performance, no. This is, this is not going to say to customers will not see any improvement in quality because they have not been complaining about 30 minutes. So trying to reduce on time stops to 10 minutes amounts to, you can't market that to customers to say it's an improvement if they are okay with the current thing. Are you getting it? Oh, on these questions, get me right. 
your say is thinking like an advanced performance and management analyst on these questions. And I want us to be at equal, at, at par when it comes to thinking. You can't come to my company and say, I want to improve. Customers are happy with what I'm doing and you want to, you want to focus on what, what, what they are happy already. How then will you charge them to say, I have improved, so can you, can you pay me extra because you are now seeing a change? You know, what you need to improve on is something that if you do it, you can turn back to customers and say, are you seeing a change? So can you pay for this value I'm creating? Now, customers are already happy with 30 minutes booked time. You are saying I can get there within 10 minutes. If a customer is happy with already with 30 minutes. So to a customer, that is not an improvement. So you can't say you are creating value for that because customers are already happy with the current system. Right? Then failed deliveries. Now, failed deliveries, they are saying these are percentage of deliveries which cannot be made due to a customer being unavailable to take delivery or parcel being incorrectly addressed. 5%, meaning 5 in a 100. So this is a huge number, guys. Five in a hundred parcels are failed delivery. So you, are, you have to tell the examiner that, look, failed deliveries are an element of waste. So failed deliveries, they have an element of waste and they have a connotation of quality. Because if, 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 we, if we incorrectly address a parcel, if it is attributable that, it, it, if, it is a, if it is attributed to our fault, Clearly, we are not creating value to the customer. Even if the customer gave us false addresses or incorrect address, we don't have mechanisms in place to check the adequacy of the, the correctness of the address before we, we depart. So failed delivery, it caused by either the customer gave us a wrong address or we quoted the wrong address. Either way, the fault is ours. Because we should be able to put in place mechanisms to ensure that we check deliveries before we depart. So if we are now returning deliveries to the depot, it's, an, it's wastage and customers are dissatisfied as a result. So we are failing on delivery and quality. And currently, five in 100 customer of deliveries are failed deliveries. So clearly, corrective action must be taken. So there, there is need for us to implement the mic methodology on that one, meaning there is need to now have measurement systems in place and improve on, a, on, on, on failed deliveries. All right, you know what? Uh, this is like it was a full question paper, but uh, we couldn't finish it on time. This uh, this paper this paper was about calculating and measuring. The question is about calculating and using league tables. You are going to use league tables. So let me give you the long and short of it of this question. Uh, there is a police force. Um, I mean, there is a new prime minister who has been appointed in the country of Iceland, and the new prime minister is appointed a CEO. This CEO is in charge of policing immigration and border control. That's the, C, that's the CEO. So the, the newly elected minister has instructed the CEO of police to improve regional police forces performance by copying the method used for schools. You know, schools have got a league table, like a football league. You know, we have league tables for schools, like group A school, league A school, look, league B schools, where we have got, we rank schools from first to the last. In the recent initiative by schools ministry, league table for hundreds of schools in Iceland was created showing the best and worst in terms of examination performance only. Right. Uh, I, I, let me allow me not to read the entire question but to explain to you what league tables are. Uh, allow me to explain allow me to explain the league tables. Yes, the deal. League table is a form of benchmarking. We all have league tables, like football league. I am a staunch supporter of Arsenal, though it gives me BP and stuff, but it's, it's somewhere in the, on the league. 
and Manchester United supporters, notwithstanding the remarkable disappointment you suffered yesterday, but you know, you, you appreciate the league tables. So you can have league tables for schools, you can have league tables for football teams, you can have league tables for quite a lot. Now, in this particular uh, case, the minister is trying to copy league table for a school and try to implement league table for police force. So in what way then can we use league table to achieve the goals of the polit police force? It depends on, it depends on what are the objectives of the police force? And are those objectives do, remember by objectives of the police force, we are saying critical success factors for the polit police force. Th these are the objectives. What is this that the police force is to be known for? So the police force is known is to be known for value for money and public safety. If this is what the police force is to be known for, value for money in policing, public safety in, in society, in the physical and legal safety, fine. How then can we use league tables to measure performance of police force? Number one, each objective in the police force should be accommodated by an appropriate measure in the league table. So when you're evaluating league table, you have to check, are these measures in the league tables consistent with what we are expecting in the police force? So if the league tables ignore, for example, value for money, it means they can't be used really as a benchmark to measure the performance of police force. Another thing is, another thing is, Objectives, they don't have what is called equal weighting. I told you, critical success factors don't have equal weighting. You can't measure performance of a school by saying pass rates have equal weighting to the, to the, to the friendliness at, at the school. Suppose you are constructing league table, you can say at this school there is a high pass rate. It has got a score of 0 0.5 in terms of weight. And friendliness, yes, a score of 0 0.5. No. Clearly, pass rate is more important than the number of friends our children have at a school. So the weighting of the elements in the league table need to be addressed. Another issue is the metrics in the league table. Shh, but remember, league tables are targets. League tables. Actually, they are benchmarks, but in final analysis, they are targets we have. You need to understand that for us to use league tables, the targets or metrics in the league table should be more, should be owned. In other words, should be based on variables which are con controllable by teachers. Which are controllable by teachers. If teachers begin to realize that, oh, we have got league tables, but it's full of things that we don't control. What teachers do, they then go to teachers, teachers trade union. And what do they do? They begin to downplay the league table. You begin not to benefit from the league table because it is now demotivating to teachers because it is made up of things which is outside their control. Another issue is, in this particular question, we are told that they are taking a league table for a school and apply it to police force. And for a school, the league, for schools, the league table was just based on pass rates only. So we need to understand, are the measures for a police force, you know, for a school, be of such nature that can be adopted to a police force with minor modification? We need to understand that. You get that? And another thing is, League tables, they need, because they are benchmarks, it depends on with who are you benchmarking them with. No wonder why, no wonder why people would say, do you want to find better players of football? They wouldn't say, go to Malawi Football League. No, they don't say that. But is indeed a league table. Have you ever heard of Malawi in football? But they do have their league tables. So the issue is, league tables, for them to be of strategic use, it depends on which really are you talking about the league here. 
It needs also some imported cooperators, like if it's for police force, the regional police force, league tables for South African police force. But of course, with the crime in South Africa, <laughs> that's another issue also. Suppose you want league tables. For, you need to not to just localize your comparators, but as well for it to be strategic, like for a nation, you might as well need international league tables. Depending on the mission. If the mission is to, for police force, is to keep this country safe, so that, that international visitors and even local citizens are safe, how would you attract international visitors if you are localizing your league tables? Compare your league tables with how British police is policing its citizens. Compare your league tables with what other re recognized league forces are comparing league tables. Okay, I have, I've already told you it's the long and short of the answer because of time. What, can, what else can I say? You, you know, I said my remarks, I made my prayer in the, in the initial part of this. Uh, this is our last lecture for, for, for this particular session. Uh, I don't wish you good luck. I know you are going to pass. You may say, say, why is it? you know? Because you have been God's project. You have been God's project from the beginning. And it is his will. And he is pleased when his children prosper. When his children prosper. So I always pray to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that he show us a token of his goodness to the intent that we shall all know, consider, and understand together that there is a God who is pleased in the prosperity of his children. Number one. Number two, there is a God who bestows good things upon the unworthy for the sake of his name. I get this part right. God bestows good things upon the unworthy for the sake of his name. Not, not because you read too much. For the sake of his name. He's a loving God. So normally, the, the, he bestows good things upon the unworthy for the sake of his mercy. He's a merciful God. He, 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 you know, he, con he, he confers you with good things for the sake of his goodness. He's a good God. On that note, I wish you, and I will look, I'm not saying I wish again, I know you guys are going to, to pass. Thank you so much. Pleasure, guys. Enjoy. So uh, the to-do list is I'm going to send you additional papers. You All you have to do is to play the video and the two or three additional papers. I'm going to send them now. You'll see them in the WhatsApp class group. So definitely enjoy and make sure I pass. Make sure I pass. I have a lot of things to say to you. That, that are meant to encourage you. But I'm sure this statement is powerful. He bestows good things upon the unworthy for the sake of his mercy and his name. Not because we have read too much. No, for the sake of his name. No wonder why he said all glory should be to you. That is the God we serve. And you know, when I, when I got to know about these things, I, I had never failed the exam. As you say. As you say, I, I, I can tell you there's no exam that I can, I, can, I, can, I can write and fail. Why so? When I'm reading, after I've read, I change my language. I don't always say, oh, this time I'm going to pass. Why? Because I have pushed. I have pushed. You know, such a language is a prideful language. It's a language for someone who has got pride. You don't pass because you have read. You don't pass because I, everything is I. Everything is about myself. Everything is about I. Everything is about I. Nothing is said because God wants me to pass. And you know what? When everything is about I, 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 you are robbing God of his place. And you know how God deals with the robbers. Ask Satan, he knows. Ask Satan, he knows. He had an, he had an experience with God when he began to rob him of his place. And it was not a pleasant experience. It wasn't a pleasant experience at all. And, and, and Satan, <laughs> Satan is a classic case of how God does to those who rob him of his place. How can you say, how can you say you alone can make it? How? How? 
How can you attribute his name to Mr. Tupac? How? It's not possible. It's not possible. 